I just hit record, Matt. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Matt Huffman. I'm with um, the, obviously the project team here. Uh, I work for Chris Burke Engineering. We're a, a sub consultant. So we, we're working for Trans Systems. Um, Matt and Ben are working are with Trans Systems. Um, so our company is providing primary support for the overall project. Um, myself, personally, I'm more on the transportation side of things, project manager. Um, Pete Nyes, who's also on the call, everyone can turn their cameras and, and microphones on, um, which is fine if, if you feel comfortable with that, um, if you have a camera. Um, <clears throat> and then Pete Nyes, I don't know, Pete, if you want to introduce yourself and uh, what your expertise area is. Hi, I'm Pete Nyes. I'm with Chris Burke Engineering, and um, I, my specialty is uh, environmental. I'm uh, the environment, environmental lead for Seabell on this project. Um, so Pete and I are going to be going through, Pete, if you want to share your screen, um, Pete's going to be taking notes uh, for us here as we have our conversation. I know, you know, we're throwing a lot at everyone here, and this isn't nearly enough time to talk about all the all the things about this project, but it's, a, it's the first step here. Um, so it's the first um, time we have a chance to talk to you all, and this is our first meeting. So there's, um, you know, from here on out, uh, you know, a lot of opportunities to, to reach out to the project team to talk about certain things outside of the SIG forum. Um, we're here to answer questions throughout the whole project. Uh, we wanna be accessible and responsive to everyone here. So we understand a lot of people have concerns about the overall project and the study. Um, and uh, you know, so I think real quickly, what the focus of this small breakout group is, is to really give people an opportunity to talk, to talk to us and to explain what each individual person's issues and needs are, what's on your mind about the project. Um, some of the folks, on our group here today. Uh, real quickly, we're going to go around and reintroduce ourselves just so we all um, know who each other are. And um, before I do that, uh, I'm just going to um, take one step and um, explain, you know, kind of the overall role of this exercise and how this fits in, right? So usually when we start our planning process, we really want to understand what are the issues and needs. And then from there, we go into figuring out goals and objectives. Um, and from that point, that's our launching board into to establishing what's the purpose and need of this project. And that's, uh, we'll talk about that after this breakout group, we have a, a little slide and that'll be more focused at the next SIG meeting. And that's the base for this project of establishing why are we here? What are we doing? And that's how this input fits into that. This, this input helps us develop this purpose and need for the project in this conversation. So um, this is our opportunity to kind of have a talk about issues and needs. So. Um, Pete has a little note sheet here. Uh, we really want to try and separate things out into Quinton Road, Old McHenry Road, if we can. Um, I know they're two different roadways. Uh, they have their own issues and needs, their own challenges. So we want to try and categorize things out. So if you do have comments, if you can direct it, some of it might be applicable to both. Uh, but if you have a comment, um, we'd like to try and direct it. If it's an Old McHenry specific thing or Quinton Road specific thing, we'd like to make note of that. If it's common amongst both, we'll, we'll mention it in both columns. Um, so building on the last exercise, um, we're going to go around and I think we'll have each person, um, I can go through our list, we'll just go alphabetical. Um, I know some folks aren't here today, our group is supposed to be I think seven or eight folks, um, some couldn't attend, but we'll just go through the list and if you could just introduce yourself again, who you represent, and then if you want to spend a minute talking about you know, what your primary issues and needs are within the, the project study area, you know, so from Quinton Road from 22 up to Old McHenry and then along Old McHenry Road, um, really from Abbey Glen all the way down to Bonnie Lane. So Bonnie Lane's just past Quinton Road. Um, and we have a few exhibits Pete can pull up. We have a location map and some other tools we can use to, if people want to talk about specific locations, we have, you know, Google Earth or we can pull up Street View to talk about specifics and we can pull those up um, to, to help the conversation here. So um, with that, um, I'm going to um, turn it over here to um, Mr. M M Michael Brown. Uh, if you could introduce yourself again and then mention some you know, key issues and needs um, that you see for this project area. Thank you. Afternoon. I'm Mike Brown. I'm the Director of Public Works for the Village of Lake Zurich. Um, we're looking forward to the project. It's, it's a... Uh, Long time coming. We've we've lived through the southern leg of Quentin Road, Quentin Road widening, um, and it's and it's made traffic mitigation uh, overall. It's a better situation. If I had to list out some of my top 
um, areas of concern for the project, uh, for the upcoming project, I would say obviously traffic mitigation, you know, being one of the tops, uh, safety. Um, we don't have a lot of drainage concerns in there, albeit uh, drainage is always a concern in uh, this day and age. And then another top one for us would be um, just the walkability of, of the project, being able to connect uh, pedestrian traffic, being able to connect them from point A to point B. Great. And then as far as they might, can you elaborate a little bit on, I know not everyone's familiar with, um, you know, kind of the municipal boundaries. You know, we got Hawthorne Woods, we got Lake Zurich, we got unincorporated areas. I don't know if you can explain a little bit about where Lake Zurich, you know, kind of touches the project. So Lake Zurich boundaries on the southern edge would be basically the uh, Mariano's um, subdivision there at Route 22 and Quentin Road, and then head north to Ensel Road is the Lake Zurich boundary on that leg. And then as you get uh, on the northern leg, it's the Midlothian Road and Old McHenry Road there is uh, Lake Zurich limits going west on Midlothian Road. Right, great. Thanks for explaining that. Um, and then from the traffic side of things, you know, what do you, you know, specifically, are there any key hotspot areas you've seen from what you've heard from residents over the years, um, you know, down, you know, at the Illinois 22, you know, kind of that area, or just your experience with the project overall? Um, uh, and outside, even outside, you know, Lake Zurich limits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Illinois, uh, so Route 22 and uh, Quentin Road has always been somewhat of a, uh, uh, a bottleneck, if you will, at uh, certain times of the day, you know, your, your heavier traffic times. And then uh, as far as our safety goes with our uh, public safety, uh, as the CN Rail, um, most of us experience uh, the CN Rail uh, line coming through uh, several times throughout the day and night. And that can back us up at any time. And, and our uh, police and fire folks, uh, if they need to get through there, that could always uh, pose potential issues for us. Great, so emergency services. Yep. Affecting, you know, affect two emergency services. That's um, right. Great, well, thanks for your, uh, thanks for your thoughts there. Um, yeah. Great, we'll move on to the next person, um, Mr. Bob Diaz. Yeah, hi. Um, so I'm a resident. I live just down the block from uh, the Hawthorne Woods Village Hall. Um, fairly new resident, actually only been here about two years. Uh, but um, yeah, I've experienced the, the you know, the issue at the tracks there. Um, I'd say probably my, my main focus, my main concern would be um, alleviating, you know, the traffic backups and that at the tracks. But I'll say not necessarily, um, I certainly want to balance that with not wanting a lot more traffic through the area, uh, both Quentin and Old McHenry Road. Um, definitely want to alleviate the issue that the tracks, so that whether it's a, I assume it's a you know overpass, mm -hmm. underpass, whatever kind of thing. Um, but I don't necessarily want to see you know like Quentin Road expanded you know all the way two lanes all the way up, because uh, then that's going to be mean Midlothian. I assume would want to be expanded as well. I don't want to see it you know 55 or 45 all the way up through there. And even, you know, Old McHenry, I think coming out of the subdivision where I'm at, um, I've seen, you know, cars backed up, but it's not a lot of cars. It's, you know, maybe only two or three because it's not that big of a neighborhood. But, you know, you can wait there for quite a while trying to turn either right or left onto Old McHenry off of Lagoon, mm -hmm. uh, right at the Village Hall there. And I'm sure it's the same for the other um, streets coming out of the subdivision, both north and south of Old McHenry. Um, so, um, those are those would be my concerns. And certainly pedestrian traffic. I mean, uh, there's a sidewalk going. From kind of the village hall over to the community center which is really nice or the the hawthorne Woods, you know the uh, the park over there mm -hmm. um which is really great um and um yeah as other people have said on the forum and whatnot you know kind of uh, making sure that folks like the church and the and the garden center aren't, aren't negatively affected great yeah thanks for your thoughts bob uh next we have mr greg dwill from forest lake Oh, you're muted, Greg. Let me, uh, I can. Oh. There you go. Better? That's good. I'm Greg, I'm Greg Dewey. I'm the chairman of the Forest Lake Community Association. Um, I'll make this brief. I think your ground rules were very important. Um, I'm here to be educated so that I can answer the residents' 
questions intelligent. Um, are really, the board really feels that any maintenance or improvement of the north, south, east, west roads up here by us are very important. Um, so we, you know, we think it's a good idea. Our biggest concern is our lake, uh, since we are bordered on this project by on two sides, mm -hmm. the concern of the water coming into the lake is um, is very, very important. Uh, when we had a meeting with you all probably about two and a half months ago, I came away from that meeting knowing that you had our lake's health at heart, and that made me feel really good. Um, so that's what we're going to look at right now as this whole thing gets started. Great. Yeah, thanks, Greg. I know we've heard, we heard quite a few um, comments from Forest Lake residents as well you know, with uh, some accessibility issues getting onto Quinton Road and onto, um, so some of those key intersections, I think the biggest one that we heard was Highland. Uh, yeah, um, Highland went, was, absolutely. Yeah, that was, I think, just uh, looking from what people, from the 200 plus comments we got, Highland seemed to be kind of the primary one. I know that's kind of serves the most people, so it makes sense that we heard the most there. Um, but some of the other roads that connect to Quinton Road too, uh, we know are, are some challenging and, you know, Quinton Road's, you know, Quinton Road's not a straight shot. You know, there's some topography, there's some dips, there's some turns. Um, yeah. Um, but we completely understand, uh, you know, the concern about water quality and effect. Um, the fact is, you know, there is a drainage divide, um, you know, that's, you know, pretty much almost all the water within the study area drains to Forest Lake. Yeah. Um, it, it, some way, shape or form, it gets there um, through different ways. So we understand and, and part of that we have to do, you know, but we do have a, a genuine, genuine interest in, in making the project and not affecting the environment to the extent we can and make not definitely not make it any worse and try and make it as good, make it better, improve water quality um, is definitely one of the main objectives um, for any roadway project that we work on. Um, I know Lake County has a lot of focus on that for all their projects. Uh, moving on down the road, um, Mr. Jim Hearman. I don't know if he's here today. I am. Oh, you are there. Sorry, I missed you right there. That's okay. I apologize. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I've lived in the area um, for 20, over 25 years in the Forest Lake subdivision. I also work at the Quentin Road Baptist Church. I've worked there for a little over 30 years. Uh, so I'm a little bit familiar with the area and some of the traffic issues. Uh, basically, uh, like uh, Greg said, just kind of collecting information. Uh, it's important to the church, uh, you know, how are the people that uh, come to church, uh, come to some of the different ministries. We also have a school and a preschool there. Uh, so we have a lot of traffic that goes in and out. Uh, we run multiple buses in and out of the facility uh, multiple times a day. There are also uh, multiple public school buses that come in and out of our facility. So safety and uh, the ease of, uh, you know, progress through the, through the corridor is uh, very important to us. Uh, not only that, uh, but uh, the neighborhood, the community is also very important. Sorry, Jim, I missed, where did you live again? Uh, in the Forest Lake. You're in Forest Lake. Okay. Sorry. I have, my kids gave me a cold, so I, <laughs> my ears are a little bit uh, not working great. It's the last 10 days, I feel like. Um, thanks. Um, so obviously, so I guess what I hear, you know, safety and accessibility to the school is, is kind of paramount for the church and school, getting people in and out. Are there any issues that you see or experience now with the existing roadway and access? Um, well, sure. Anytime that it, the, the road is backed up, it is very difficult to access the church, uh, both north or southbound on Quentin. Um, like I said, the buses uh, need to keep up with a, a specific schedule to uh, transport the kids to the local schools. Uh, so that is very important to us. Um, and then as far as, you know, I, you know, one thing, uh, you know, as far as the backups on Quentin road, how, how far South have you got, has everyone seen them go? Uh, when the train is active, uh, it can be backed up past the church, uh, actually <laughs> uh, past Highland. I've seen it before. Hmm. Got it. Yeah. That when you said that the backup goes past the church, I'm like, that's a pretty good distance there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's something that we don't know as a project team, as far as what, what's, you know, what's the average, obviously when you get a seven minute train 
which happens, um, you know, occasionally versus, you know, something three or four minutes. We did a train count, um, you know, so we, there are about 17 trains a day on average that go there. And the average is about five minutes gate downtime. Some have been up to seven minutes, uh, some down to three or four. But yeah, us understanding the backups and the cues of, of what you all experience is, is really important for us on the traffic modeling side to know, make sure we calibrate everything to what is actual reality and not, you know, something that's made up. Um, so that's good. That's great information to have here. Um, thanks, Jim. And then next on the list, I, we have um, Miss Ellen Kearney. I don't think Ellen's here today. Um, Mr. John Kelly. So Miss, uh, the other folks in our, our group are Miss Ellen Kearney. She's from Bridal Woods. She's a Bridal Woods resident. And then Mr. John Kelly. Uh, is not here as well. Um, and he is uh, representative, president and chair of the St. Matthew's Lutheran Church and School. So he's also in our SIG group here. Um, moving on down, we have Mr. Joel Kippel, our, another um, member of our, our breakout group here. And I don't think Joel's here as well. He's a Forest Lake resident. And then Mr. Eric uh, Massett. He's also not here. He's, uh, I think Matt, you might've heard Matt mention. Um, he's a commuter bus driver. Uh, he's also on a cycling team, um, cycling group that um, in the area there. I think the Wheeling Wheelmen, uh, as well as another cycling team. So he works for Lake, Lake Zurich School District 95 as a bus driver. Um, so he's on our SIG as well. And then uh, last is Mr. Uh, Phil Ruiz, who I believe is on the call. <laughs> Bill, uh, I know you were experiencing some issues early on here. Oh, his microphone's not working. Okay, but he did chat me up here. So, um, Philip um, said he's a, he's a permit engineer at Lake County Stormwater Management. Uh, right now, he has, from their perspective, no concerns along the corridor, mostly small culvert crossings within our project study area. There will be wetland impacts and possibility and possibly floodplain impacts and detention will be required if we exceed um, one and a half acres of, of added um, pavement area or added we call it impervious area so anything that's a hardscape anything that water can't drain through basically if we add more of that we got to mitigate that and usually that's when you um, provide detention basins on a project um, so that's a that's a lake county regulation um, which uh, Philip uh, regulates. Philip, any other thing, any, uh, anything that I missed there? Any other comments or responses? I can read your uh, chat message here. <clears throat> and then wetland mitigation. So, um, so if we do impact any wetlands, and that's part of what we're doing right now. I know a lot of folks have seen boots on the ground. We've been doing a lot of survey work. It's a big project area. Part of what we do is wetland delineations and that's where Pete and I's um, his expertise is at there uh, so we're, we're wrapping that assessment up and then we we coordinate with Lake County Stormwater Management as well as the Army Corps of Engineers to um, to to confirm the boundaries of where the wetlands are at uh, and so that's a process we go through and any wetlands that we impact we got to we need to mitigate those so usually what that means is we um, we bank them um, so there's a regulation that any any wetland that's impacted, we got to replace it somewhere. So usually they have wetland sites that are man-made that have been created, and we pretty much pay money into that pot um, to to buy credits, so to speak, of of wetlands. Um, and so sometimes if it's a high quality wetland, um, you know, you might have to replace if it's a half an acre impact on our project, we might have to replace you know five times that if it's a high quality wetland. Um, so there's a lot of regulations in there, but that gets into the environmental aspects of the project. So I won't belabor that. I know we're here to talk um, kind of about the issues and needs. So here in all of that, uh, you know, kind of the issues and needs. Um, and before I kind of dive into that, Pete, I don't see, oh, I see our, our time remaining here. Um, so some of the other, you know, kind of taking the issues and needs that we heard, and that kind of really ties hand in hand with, with goals and objectives of our project. This is a transportation project. Um, Lake County Division of Transportation is leading this. So there's, um, 
you know, a lot of things that we can do as part of this project and address a lot of issues and needs, but there are some things, um, you know, at the bottom, there are other key considerations um, for a project. And sometimes we heard earlier in the last workshop, you know, context, aesthetics. Um, so kind of getting into the goals and objectives, um, kind of what I heard, you know, just building on the issues and needs is, you know, addressing obviously the railroad crossing and the backups that occur and some of the congestion accessibility um, is another one. Um, so I, I guess I'll kind of open it up to the group now for, for general conversation as far as what are some goals and objectives we should be thinking about as we, we move this project forward, given um, uh, what we heard is kind of the issues, what are the problems? So some of, some of the, um, um, to kind of spur the discussion here, um, you know, we're, as part of our process, you know, we're looking at congestion, you know, looking at a transportation project, really starting at the Illinois 22 intersection all the way up. Um, and so as part of that process, you know, we look at what traffic exists today, but we also plan for what traffic is to come in the future. And that's based off of traffic projections and that, that those projections are what we design our project to. And that's really what dictates um, the overall design. And so it's, you know, when you make a significant investment that costs millions of dollars, the thought is that we want to address the problems that we have right now, but, you know, what's going to happen in the future based off of planning projections. And that um, talks to, you know, population and employment growth in Lake County in the region. And that those numbers are dictated by the planning agency um, that Matt, you might've heard Matt mention CMAP in the, in the presentation there, those projections are used. And those are, that's, this is information that we're going to be talking about at our next SIG meeting. And we'll provide you all to know, Hey, here's what traffic is today. And some of that was at the virtual forum. Um, here are the amount of cars that travel on the road today. And here's what's projected to come in the future. And we want to make sure we build an improvement that lasts for, for quite some time. Um, so, you know, accessibility, you know, as far as, you know, pedestrian and bike, I know we didn't really talk about that out. Does anyone have any thoughts as far as goals, objectives for, you know, for, for the pedestrian bicyclists? So kind of, you know, non-motorized, are there any thoughts on that uh, in that regard? Is connectivity, you know, from Forest Lake, are there any connections we should be thinking about making as far as, you know, non-motorized goals? And Greg, I don't know if you have any, you know, from the Forest Lake side of things, do you guys have any existing trails or sidewalks, um, you know, or any planned improvements that you guys would be making? Well, not that I'm aware of. I mean, we have no sidewalks. The only, the only thought that has ever um, been brought up is how to get from Forest Lake down to uh, Route 22 to go shopping and things of that nature. They were talking about how do you get, you know, go from the east side of Quentin Road to the west side. You know, there's gotta be some sort of way for people to get that way to walk down to the shopping center, the McDonald's and, and all the other stuff down there. Um, that's all that I have, uh, that I've ever heard of at this point. So accessibility. And I know that's a big, that's a big focus for Lake County general and generally speaking, and they have a non-motorized policy for all of their projects. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anytime you're making a roadway improvement, they always look at bike paths and sidewalks and making those connections um, and kind of completing the overall network. Um, I'd, I'd like to jump in a, a bit. Of course, here. yeah, go ahead. As a resident from in the area, um, I've certainly seen cyclists going down Old McHenry and oh my gosh, I would never do that myself. That just seems way too dangerous, um, especially with the speed limit in, in some of those areas. Um, and as well, you know, coming up uh, Quentin uh, from south of 22, I've seen, uh, you know, they have a nice, nice uh, walking path on, on the side of the road there. Mm -hmm. And I've seen all kinds of folks, you know, uh, just walking, you know, taking a stroll. Um, it would be, I think it would be just amazing to have that kind of a, um, a pathway going along uh, Quentin Road north to, um, to Old McHenry. Uh, because people would have that opportunity to do that. I mean, I just see people going out. It seems like for an evening stroll, I'm like, oh my gosh, what a great, you know, it's exercise, it's being outside. It's just really just a great way to enjoy the area. Um, I don't know what we have as far as, you know, if there's enough space for that or whatever, but um, mm -hmm. if you have yeah. something really great to see is for people. Yeah, either or people, cycling, yeah you, you know? brought up, you brought up a great point there. I know we got to break out to the overall group, but on road bicyclists, you see a lot of bike groups, a lot of cyclists that don't, you know, those are people that aren't going to use a separate path. They're going to be on the road. Do you see a lot of that in the area? 
Yeah. Um, I've seen a fair number. I actually live down in Inverness, um, you know, along uh, uh, Ela Road, down okay. by Palatine Road, and there were cyclists going that way because it's like the only way to go north south to the you know the other mm -hmm. uh, bike trails and that. So to see. Uh, you know, safe access for folks up here would just be really, really great, you know, up Quentin, as long as all, along old McHenry and perhaps even, I don't go up uh, Midlothian that much, but perhaps mm -hmm. up that way as well would be really just fantastic. Yeah. We did hear a lot of people at the forum wanting to go to the aquatic center. I think that was yeah. a big, a big comment we heard uh, destination. Um, and so I know that's something that we want to look at, but that's, that's part of what we want to do here is figure out, you know, what, you know, we have our, our study for the roadway, but, you know, can a bike path